Hey, and welcome back to Builder Funnel Radio. This is episode 85 with Logan Schinholzer from Full Sail Marketing. And in this conversation, we talk about video, video marketing, video for sales, how to get started with little to no equipment and little to no editing. Um, we also talk about some tips for you if you are scared to get in front of the camera or it feels really uncomfortable. And so I think you'll get a ton out of this episode. Stay tuned for episode 85 with Logan Schinholzer. Hey, Logan, glad to have you on the show today. Spencer, how are you today, man? I'm doing good. How about yourself? Doing all right. Thank you. Good, good. Yeah. Um, I know we're going to dig into to video marketing today, and I know that's a, a super hot topic and um, something that's really, I feel like it's become critical for businesses to get involved in video. But before we get too deep in the weeds, um, maybe give a little bit of context, a little bit of background about how you got into the both the construction space, but then also the, the marketing side of things. Sure, man. Well, my background is my dad is a contractor. He's a pond and water feature builder up in Maryland. So I grew up in that household. And in 2014, he had a just a general local marketing company that was doing his marketing. And it just wasn't really working. It was very templated towards the masses, restaurants, movie theaters, contractors, but it was all kind of in one. It didn't really work for him. So uh, we came back from a conference and he said to me, because I was working in the field, I my job was all day to take the heavy rocks from the front yard and put them in the backyard <laughs> all day long. That's a great job. Yeah. Uh, it's really good because at that point I was training for the military. So it, it kept me in shape. Um, so I, I uh, he said, do you want to do this? And I said, sure. So um, I started, just had no idea what I was doing. He actually hired um, a guy named Tom Reber who taught me the basics of marketing. And part of that was I was just okay with pulling out my phone and just recording what was going on and documenting what the team was doing. And that slowly but surely just turned into how we marketed things. And then fast forward, now I have a, uh, a marketing agency where we focus specifically on contractors. Um, and it's just a lot of content, a lot of video, everything we can do to take all the great stuff they're doing in people's homes and put that online so it doesn't fall on deaf ears. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. And uh, similar to, uh, to how I got into marketing as well, kind of working for family business and uh, not really necessarily so much interest on the actual like work of the business, but promoting it and marketing it. So uh, always love hearing those stories, but you, you kind of talked about how you were really comfortable documenting, just pulling out your phone. And I feel like that's a big part of it is, you know, when you think about what you do every day, you're the expert, you know, all these details, you know, how to, uh, you know, repair a roof or remodel a kitchen or do the thing, but your customers don't. But maybe you can talk a little bit about like, what do you do when you're documenting the process? Like, where do you post that? You know, how does that all kind of start? Sure. So that's a great question. So the number one thing that as a, as a contractor, remodeler, home builder that you got to remember is you know way more than you think you know. And the homeowner knows way less than you think that they know. So can you, can you say that again? I'm so glad you said that. Just repeat sure. that. <laughs> you as a contractor, whatever, whatever industry you're in, you know way more than you think you know, and you're the an homeowner expert. knows yeah. <laughs> way less than you think that you, than they know. So um, the way that we do all this and, and the approach that we have is when we educate somebody, a, a homeowner, a prospect, whoever it is, the more that they understand what goes into what we do, the more that we empower them and the more that they value what we do, right? We all have those uh, prospects that think they can already, you know, oh yeah, like it's, you know, it's just like putting up a, you know, some drywall, like how hard could it be? Like, I don't want to pay that money. And it's just like, well, why, you know, if it's that easy, why don't you just do it yourself? So by documenting everything that goes on in the world, in our case was pond building, um, it really showed that it's not as straightforward as you may think it is. So we would document what goes on day to day, teach people, um, you know, walk through basic FAQs, just every aspect of our world, we would take out of the guys, you know, the crew's head, put it online, and then at mass scale, because we're up in uh, the DC Baltimore area, show 
all the residents of DC and Baltimore who have a pond in their backyard and have no idea what to do with it, hey, we're here. We're here to educate you. We're here to empower you with all of this stuff. And slowly but surely, the leads, because of we did, it was all focused on blogging and video, and they pretty much worked in tandem. Uh, the leads, I think, went from 210 the first year. Next year was 336, and the next year was 512. So we effectively doubled the amount of leads that they got in two years because we were just literally showing people what the world of pond building was like. Yeah, that's awesome. And and I I love that too because a lot of people think, oh, well, I don't want to share this because then I'm basically telling my customer how to do their own project. But the people that are going to do their own project are going to find a way anyway, and they're not going to actually pay you regardless. So what you're really doing is showing all the people that don't want to do the project, why they don't want to do the project. And then like you said, they're more inclined to pay you because they're like, Oh, that looks really hard or really time consuming or really tedious or fill in yeah. the blank. So we, we yeah, use it in the I sales process. Like we, yeah. we will say like, Hey, we'll show you what goes into it. And then people don't like for, for pond cleaning, what happens with ponds is somebody moves into a new home. They just bought it and their realtor says, Oh no, this pond, like it's going to look great when you guys move in. Don't worry. Well, guess what happens when they move in? It still looks terrible. And people look at this pond. It's really more of a cesspool at this point in their backyard. They don't want it. It's like moving into a house that came with a stray cat that now you got to feed this cat. <laughs> you didn't ask for the cat, but now you got to deal with it. And then when you call the pond guy up and you go, Hey, I want you to take care of this cat. And the, the pond person goes, yeah, it's a thousand bucks. You're like, dude, I didn't even want this cat in the first place. Now you're telling me it's a thousand bucks. So by educating people, what really goes into it, it helps show them that, you know, you just see a little bit of brown water and you think it's a quick fix, but let me show you what's really below the surface. And you'll see that, you know, we've got 500 pounds of wet leaves that is going to take us all day to get out of there. So that's why it's a thousand bucks. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. I love it. Well, let's talk about equipment and maybe editing a little bit. Cause I think people, they go, okay, let's do some video. Oh, I got to buy like a two or $3,000 camera and, you know, get all this fancy editing software. Um, you know, you mentioned that you just were comfortable pulling out your phone. So mm -hmm. are, are there some easy ways to get started in terms of equipment? And then do you recommend doing some, at least some light editing? And if so, what kind of software? So for, for the first four and a half years, so I, I've been doing, started marketing six years ago at this point, first four and a half years, I did everything using my iPhone and then um, as like the main camera. Uh, Casey Neistat, who's a big time uh, YouTuber, says that the number one camera to use is the one that is most readily available to you. For him, he actually had a show on HBO that the whole thing was <laughs> edited using iMovie, which wow. is the free software that comes with your Mac. So what we always talk about with, uh, you know, having to go out and get all this great equipment and this and that, first off, iPhones these days, or at least in the past few years, if you have, I would say at this point, the iPhone 7 or newer, you've got more than enough power in your pocket. Um, as far as sound and audio goes, we always suggest miking up because we kind of talk about the visual can be like a 7 out of 10, but the audio needs to be at about a 9 out of 10. So we are a big fan of using, it's called like a Rode mic. It's a lapel mic that goes right on your shirt. It's wired up. Um, and then we, for certain things, we'll have a tripod. So it's really just going to be your iPhone or your Android, if you got that, a wired mic and a tripod. And that's really the equipment that you need. And, it's, and you know, the mic and tripod are all together under a hundred bucks on Amazon. And then as far as equipment goes or software goes, if you have an iPhone, you've got iMovie on your phone. So you can do enough editing, for, you know, as a contractor doing iMovie on your phone because nobody expects it to be perfect. They don't want yeah. a corporate looking video because you're not a corporate company. You are a contractor. It can be more raw and it should be more raw because it shows more of your personality. So we're big fans of saying, you know, if, if editing is going to be the thing that stops you from filming and putting out video, then don't worry about editing, just get it out there. But if you really want to take it you know, to the next level, editing is a great way to do that. And if you have an iPhone, then you can do it all on iMovie on your iPhone app. Or if you have an Android, uh, Adobe Premiere Rush is like the 
Android version of iMovie. Cool. Yeah. And uh, I'll probably bug you after the show and grab some recommendations on equipment. We can link them up in the show. We have, we have a whole people, list. Uh, yeah. Cool. I'll just share the, uh, the doc with you. It's just a list of everything. Perfect. Yeah. And, and I love what you said there too, because we tend to get hung up on thinking about getting it to where we want it to be in a perfect world. It's this polished, perfect thing. And if you don't start at level one, you never get to level 10, you know? So to your point, like, Hey, if editing's going to stop you, don't edit, just do a one take wonder and put it out in the world. So I love that. Um, but let's talk about types of content. You said documenting, but then, you know, where should people start in terms of types of videos they should be creating on kind of a regular basis or, or a one-off, like you got to have these types of videos in your arsenal. Sure. Great question. So we, we have three videos that we always suggest you do. Um, the first one is going to be, it's the about us video. Uh, the about us video, the reason that we say do this one first is because the, everybody's favorite topic is themselves, right? Everybody likes talking about themselves. It's easy to talk about yourself for the most part. So the idea is that you just want to get comfortable being on camera. So the first video we always say is just do the about us video. You can put that on your website's about us page. You can put this on social media. You can even put this in your email uh, signature. So whenever somebody, whenever you email a prospect or a client right below your name, instead of just having a boring, you know, looks like a stock photo of yourself, you have a video that just talks about you, why you do what you do, your history, things like that about us video. The second type of video we always suggest is the FAQ video. What we like to do with this is we say, Hey, pick a service, a specific service that you provide. So let's say uh, kitchen remodeling. We'll then say, answer the top seven. This comes from Marcus Sheridan himself. The top seven most commonly asked questions you get around kitchen remodeling. And that's all it is. You just answer those top seven questions and that will First off, like if you put this on your website, if you have a kitchen remodeling page on your website, put this video there and this will be one of the best pre-qualifiers you'll ever have because when people go to your site and they watch this, they now know if you really follow the top seven questions, most likely it's gonna be what, what it costs ballpark range, how long it takes, what are some of the top features that you can put in there, what's that process look like, right? So they know everything. So by the time they watch this video and they call you, they are a very qualified buyer. So FAQ video is fantastic for that. And last but not least is project profile videos. Everybody likes a good story. So instead of just doing, you know, before and after pictures of your projects, you can actually put a story and a feeling and an emotion behind what you do. People remember stories. So if you can actually talk about, hey, we have this kitchen right here. We're doing it for the Smith family. Now with them, if you notice, this is a very small kitchen here and it's isolated from the rest of the house because it was built in the eighties. So what are we doing? We got two young kids. They want to all be able to hang out while the parents cook in the morning. The kids can sit there at the breakfast bar. So we're going to knock down this wall. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. And now the family comes together and people remember that stuff. But if you document that project and walk people through that, well, now you're not just a kitchen remodeler. Now you're the family togetherness renovator, however you want to title yourself. But that's the idea is that now you're, you're really selling on the emotion of what you do instead of just selling on what you do. And that takes you from a commodity to a consultant. So about us first, just to get on camera, FAQs. And then last but not least is those project profiles. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And it's straight out of the, the inbound marketing playbook in terms of like understanding the way people shop and buy and like they want to know everything before they actually talk to you. And so if you don't have this type of information on the website, they don't get to do that research. They feel like I, I wasn't able to learn everything I wanted, but they're still like not ready to call you. So by creating this, you kind of let them dig deeper into your company. They get to see your face. They get to see your clients. Um, and, and those are nice, like three really tangible chunks of videos that you can, you know, create. Um, how often should you be, creating these types of videos. And I know you talked about kind of documenting the process too. So maybe there's like some things you set in place and then there's some ongoing stuff, but how does that kind of play out in reality when you're in, in the throes of, you know, day-to-day -day work? Sure. So the, the about us video and the FAQs, um, you know, unless something big changes about you as a person 
or the FAQs, like you, you realize that there's actually a whole other set of seven questions that people are, are asking you. Those are more so you just got to do them once and maybe every few years you update them just, you know, it's like, you don't want an old picture on your dating profile. So with the about us, you want the most up-to-date stuff. Project profiles, on the other hand, those should be as much as possible as long as you can remain consistent with it. So if you're a home builder or remodeler and you're only doing a, a couple projects at a time and they're longer projects, there's really not much of an excuse to not document that stuff. But, you know, for let's say like my dad's company at Pond Building, um, a pond build, they do one every about four or five days. So they record all those. But for pond cleanings, they have two crews doing three or four cleanings a day. It's not always feasible to document every single one. So yeah. I would say and probably not necessary either. It's right? not. Yeah, they're all the same. It's like, you know, how to change a, a you know, oil, like a car's oil. And you got to do it a couple times and maybe you do one on a, a truck and then one on a, a small car and then one on, I don't know, like a Hummer, just different things to show the differences. But like, I don't need to see 14 Toyota Corolla oil changes in a row. So, <laughs> yeah. but I would say with you guys, especially if you're in the visual space, you know, unless you're doing the exact same cookie cutter kitchen or home every single time, if you have different features, different stories, background stories, um, then you definitely want to be documenting as many project profiles as you can, as long as you can remain consistent with it. Yeah. Yeah. That's great advice. And <clears throat> maybe let's talk about insourcing versus outsourcing video. Um, maybe how do you decide, but then are there certain videos that kind of are easier to do in-house and then there's some that it's like, yeah, this actually is more efficient to do outside the company. So that's another good question. Um, because video scares everybody for the most part. Um, so what I would say is for when we, whenever, let's say, for example, whenever we start working with a, a company and we do video for them, I do my best to explain, cause we have like, you know, here are the shots that we want. Here's what we want you to say, things like that. But it always comes back that when we edit it and we'll send it back to them, they realize, oh, wow, there's, there's a lot of shots that I probably could have gotten or I should have done. So it's almost like the first few videos we know you're going to miss stuff just because you don't have the eye for it yet. But once we send you back, you know, the best case video that we've done for you, you go, oh, wow. Okay. Like there are other things. So I would say if you have the, you know, if you have somebody on staff that can 100% be head of video, do your best to do it in house. Um, for us, we are like, we always have clients film themselves. You know, they do all the filming because we all work remotely at this point. And then they send us the footage and we send them back the final and we'll say, Hey, this was great. Next time, you know, maybe we could do this, this, and this. Um, so I would say at some point, every company is going to need an in-house videographer that does all this stuff to document everything because by the end of 2020, 82% of the internet is going to be video usage and, and video streaming. Um, but for the time being, you can still outsource some of the stuff, but I would suggest doing the filming in-house so that way you don't go, well, in two months, we're going to have a film crew come in and produce this really high end, really expensive video of a pond cleaning. When in reality, in that time, you could have done 15 different pond cleanings, five different kitchens, whatever it is, and gotten way more bang for your buck. And now you, you know, you really tell your story. So I would always err on the side of doing everything in-house. But if you absolutely know I am not going to do this in-house, then you can outsource it. Yeah, I think that's good advice. Um, so talk to me a little bit about some tips for people that are maybe uncomfortable or don't like the idea of getting in front of the camera because you said, hey, at least, you know, clients will film themselves even if you're not going to do the editing, you know. Yeah, what should people do if they're like, ah, the camera's not for me? <laughs> so the, the first thing that we always do with this is we explain that everybody is scared at first. Literally 100% of people are afraid of getting on camera at first. And then once you do it, you realize, well, that wasn't so bad. So that's the first thing that you gotta get over is, is that if you mess up, if you say, um, if you forget what to say, guess what? 100% of people go through that. So everybody does it. Um, what we like to do is we like to, if we're gonna film in person, we like to do um, interview style things. So if I'm talking with you, Spencer, what I'll do is, is I'll set up the camera on a tripod and I'll just say, Spencer, don't, don't worry about looking at the camera lens. Just look right at me. 
Just make eye contact with me and we're going to do all this straight interview style. And when we do that, we can then go on the back end and edit everything out. So all the pauses, all the this, all the that, we can edit all that, which is the, the beauty of editing is you can make it flow nice and, and easy. Um, but having an, a normal conversation where somebody actually interviews you is the first thing that I would say you would definitely want to do that to get over the camera shyness. But then on top of that, if you don't have an interviewer, start off with at least shooting video, maybe with not your face on it, but your voice. And then maybe what you do is you, you know, you hold the camera up, you know, a foot away from your chest and you point things out, you know, like you see the cabinets over there. We took them from a, you know, a stained wood look. And now it's like the off white look and you're just pointing. So at least your, your index finger and your voice are on camera. You do a bunch of those until you work your way up to getting your face on camera. And then next thing you know, you're a rock star. So just ease into it if you really are that, you know, if it's really stopping you from doing the video stuff. Yeah. And it, it does take a little bit of time to get used to it, but like everything, <clears throat> those are good tips to ease your way into it and get a few reps in. And um, I always say too, like, Hey, shoot 10 of them. You know, if you're doing like a little one minute clip and just pointing at the job site or something like do it 10 times, it'll take you 10 or 15 minutes and you already have 10 reps. And if you do that every week, you know, you'll be, you'll be a lot more comfortable, you know, after a month or two. So, um, Logan, what else should we know about video? And you, you mentioned something interesting that 82% of web usage will be video by the end of this year, but anything else important that, you know, contractors, remodelers, builders should know when they're thinking about video? So video is not just a marketing tool. Video is a huge sales tool. Video makes selling easier. And here's what I mean by that is for me personally, when I sell for clients that I work with and, and it's kind of trickled down from me doing it to them and then now they do it to their clients, you have uh, programs and softwares called like Loom, Vidyard. And what those are is these are apps that you have on either your computer or your phone where you can record videos of yourself speaking directly to a prospect and then you can send them a link and what it'll do is if you email them a link it will literally show a thumbnail of you talking at them i'll title it you know video for spencer and then when spencer clicks on it it plays the video of me speaking so what this does is most contractors will go out to a, a homeowner's house they do the the normal like go around you know do all the uh the the selling, you know, like doing a consultation, come back, go home, spend an hour working on the proposal, send it out to the homeowner, and then they get ghosted. So if you, if that's your process, well, you know, that, that's fine. But at least when you send the proposal over, send over a video with it, that is you walking down the proposal. Cause you can actually on some of these apps, you can record your face and the screen at the same time. And you can send it over and say, hey, you know, I had a really great time the other day. Let me walk you through the proposal and just kind of explain it real quickly, just so it's a bit of a personal feel to it as well. I also use it when, whenever I talk to a client and they say, I got to think about it. And I go through all my objection handling and I don't do a good enough job on it. And th then I get ghosted. I will then send them looms and it will be, and I actually sold a, a website about a month ago because I had a, a guy who I've been chasing for six months. And he was starting to do a bunch of Facebook lives. And I just sent him a, a loom with this, this video that was the, you know, my screen. It was him doing a Facebook live and it was my face. And I was like, hey man, first off, love that you're doing Facebook live. A couple quick tips. Number one, take your glasses off because when you do video, people need to see the whites of your eyeballs to trust you. Number two, and I kind of went through a couple basic things, just emailed it out to him. And then I got an email right back that said, thank you so much. Really appreciate that. I need to get going on this website. When can you talk? So I use that as a sales tool, as a one-to-one -one private video. But if I would have just emailed him, I don't think it would have had the same effect. So video is not just marketing. It's not just lead generation. It's not just branding. It is huge on sales. So it really does help. Yeah, I love that. And you, you really can use it at every, every stage of the business too, you know, even in production and, you know, warranty and, and all those different stages. Um, so that's great advice. And Logan, I got one last uh, segment of the show for us, but before we get to that, you know, what's the best way for people to learn more about your services or connect with you online? Best way to do that is head over to contractor growth network. 
www.contractorgrowthnetwork.com. We got a podcast. Uh, just make sure you go on there, subscribe to it, but contractorgrowthnetwork.com. Very cool. Yeah, we'll, we'll link it up in the show notes for all you guys as well. Um, but we're going to head into our last seg segment. We call it the Fast Five. So I'm going to hit you with five rapid fire questions and uh, yeah, just say whatever comes to mind. So first cool. one, kind of a softball, but what's the, uh, I guess, your favorite business book and why? Favorite business book is a book called Traction by Gino Wickman. And the reason for this is this, it's kind of like part two of the e-myth. It will open your, your eyes and your mind as far as what it takes to really run a business. And if you read this, you'll effectively know exactly what is going on in every aspect of your business. So Traction by Gino Wickman. Yeah, yeah, I, I love that one. We went through that process and there's another one called Four Disciplines of Execution. It's very similar business process, you know, recommend either Traction is a, a really, yeah. a really good one. Um, all right, who is the most inspirational person in your life? So I would say both of my parents are very, they, I am, uh, you know, a product of both of them. I've got, you know, my bet, my dad's a entrepreneur, so I've got that acumen side of it, but my mom is a, a pretty good thinker. So I would say as far as like between the two of them, I don't know if that's a cop out answer, but <laughs> both of my parents definitely are like the, the, I'm a product of both of them. Yeah. That's awesome. I like that. Um, all right. So if you could have one superpower, what would that be? Uh, so for me, the ability to not have to sleep would help just get so much more done. <laughs> yeah. You'd, uh, you'd be running circles around all of us. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Describe yourself in three words. So three words, uh, for me would be, and don't take this the wrong way, but aggressive. I would also say empathetic and then generous. Awesome. And uh, last question, if you could leave our listeners with one piece of advice, what would that be? I would say, with all this video stuff, there's a reason that I was excited to talk about this because I see what video has done for myself and clients is video is one of the, in a business, scariest things to start doing. But once you do it, you'll realize it wasn't that bad. And once you start doing it, the way that you operate your business will completely change. It is that powerful. So I urge you to do it, especially in this day and age with everything going more and more virtual get on video and you will not be sorry that you did. Awesome. Yeah, that's great advice. And Logan, thanks again for joining me on the show today. This was great. Spencer. Thanks, man. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that conversation about video marketing with Logan. Um, few takeaways. I know you're on the go. So I like to pull those out for you. Uh, the first one was um, I liked those buckets of videos because sometimes we get hung up around what do we talk about? So, the about us video, the FAQ videos, and then the project profile. So um, start with those. That'll give you plenty of video content for quite some time uh, if you're just getting started. The second one is don't overthink equipment. So start with your phone, start with some light editing or no editing. You can use a service like Logan's, you can use uh, freelancers, you can use fiverr.com to get your editing done. Um, just get the footage filmed and then you can get some editing done, uh, and then you can get those videos out the door. And then the third one is just get started. Um, video is not going away, it's only gonna grow. You heard Logan throw out that stat, um, and I've found that to be true over the last couple of years with just the rate that video is increasing. So you might as well start figuring it out now uh, so that you're ahead of your competitors and ahead of the curve in the future. Thanks, you guys, for listening, and we'll see you next time on Builder Funnel Radio.